Hello and welcome to episode 4 of Fan OCC, or Original Creature Concepts. My name is Marcus Witte and I am a creature character artist working in the film and games industry. In today's video we'll be looking at a concept by Yasan Stolov uh, called Magma Elemental Portrait. And if you want, you can go and check out his portfolio links in the description box below. He's got some amazing concepts and ideas to be inspired by. I'd like to take a moment to thank all my supporters for following and liking my artwork. And if you haven't already, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. And with that being said, let's get into ZBrush. Okay, so inside of ZBrush, you're going to be using the female bust uh, that comes with ZBrush, as well as the move brush, the clay buildup brush, and the dam standard. And at this point, I'm just blocking out some of those key features of the head, um, some of the ears, the a mouth, pointing out where the mouth will be, as well as later on uh, coming in with the clay buildup and starting to use it to build in some of those other areas around the face. Uh, keeping it very loose at the beginning. I like to keep my models loose at the beginning. I don't want to go working in too much detail in areas because I want to get a general overall sculpt going before I get into those really fine details. So today's concept has come from a Yasan Stolov, a concept artist slash illustrator. And uh, you can find his portfolio and links in the description box below. Uh, what really attracted me to this concept was the hard surface but beauty in the hard surface that he created uh, with this female face. Uh, it's called a Magma Elemental Portrait and it really does bring through a sense of stern but also beauty in, in the concept. So this is not the first time that I've created Magma Elemental Creatures. I have two other ones that I have on my channel as time-lapse videos and uh, the techniques used in those ones are exactly the exact same techniques that are used in this one. So if you want, you can go check those ones out. Those are more full body characters rather than just a portrait. And uh, those were inspired by creatures on film such as Sortan from Thor Ragnarok, Kratos from Wrath of the Titans, and Rodan from Godzilla King of the Monsters. Well, my favorite would have to be Sortar from Thor Ragnarok uh, he's just got the really cool concept art that came with it. Um, I'd highly recommend you go and have a look at them as reference and inspiration for your own works if you're doing a magma type creature. So continuing on with the sculpt, I'm just using my imagination to fill in the back of this character's head because unfortunately we only have the front and I decided that it's going to be hollow in the back rather than having a full on head at the back. So uh, that's what you just saw there. Uh, I'm still very loosely sculpting. I'm not into any detailing at all. Adding some eyeballs. Uh, then I will also add some eyelids by duplicating those eyeballs and then just sculpting over to add the eyelids. I find this helps a lot when we are sculpting to have everything separate as much as possible because you can get the details and you can get the placement right really uh, more closely uh, than if you had everything merged together. You don't want to have everything merged together because you you could just come out with a big blob at the end and, and detail would be really messy. So uh, still using the move brush uh, to move some pieces here and there to get the proportions looking better. Constantly moving around my model. Uh, it's, it's very important to move around your model as much as possible. You do not want to get stuck in one place for too long. And uh, I, I repeat this over and over again uh, because it is very important. Uh, you all, I, I find a lot of people get tunnel vision when they're working on a piece and it'll just stay in one place for far too long. So using the dam standard, I'm just cutting in some really deep cracks into the skin and uh, this will help to uh, make those sort of rock features kind of stand out later on. Uh, move move brush trying to get that sort of head at the top looking correctly and then also using the clay build up to add some more uh, volume to some areas and then just cutting in with the dam standard as you can see i'm using asymmetry on this character as i said before so i'm actually sculpting one side and then sculpting the other side this is very difficult to do because i wanted to keep the face pretty symmetrical 
So I had to make sure that every time I sculpted in the face through area, that it was actually uh, sculpted with symmetry turned on, as well as sym symmetry on on the model on the uh, to as well. Uh, now I'm just adding some of those areas on the chest area and the shoulder blades. Again, asymmetry was involved here. I quite like asymmetry. Uh, I like to actually sculpt everything in symmetry first because it's a lot easier to do symmetry and then go in and do asymmetry once you've got the the, the block out correct or you have your model, I would say 80% there. So I, I really try to keep things very loose and very basic when I'm doing my sculpts. I don't like using a lot of unique brushes. I know there's a lot of them out there and I see make, it actually makes it very daunting for people starting off in ZBrush to, to see so many professional brushes and uh, what, you know, what you can achieve with these very unique brushes. But I say that if you train with the basics first and get them down and master them as much as possible, you'll find that you'll only have a handful of brushes that you'll actually use. So for me, it's the Move brush, the damn standard, standard brush, smooth, trim dynamic, and maybe one or two more. I don't like using a lot of different brushes uh, if I can uh, help it. And I normally try to tackle uh, sculpting in ZBrush as if it was real clay in real life, because it essentially is, you know, you, you sculpt with your hands in real life and you get some tools, you get a few tools, you don't use too many. Same with me. I like to sculpt using just a few tools and uh, if need be, one or two brushes that are very unique, but that's really uh, at the very end when I'm trying to do detail work and stuff like that. But for the block out area or the block out stage, I like to use just the basic brushes. So right now, still in Dynamesh mode. Also a very good tool to, to get your, get around or get your head around is Dynamesh. Um, it free, just frees you up from having to worry about topology and if you're stretching topology and whatnot. I, I hate stretching topology and I hate using real topology when I'm working inside a ZBrush. I like to use Dynamesh, which basically frees you from the restraints of topology inside a ZBrush when you're sculpting. And you can go ahead and you can you can make mistakes or you can really detail areas or cut into areas, re it, and it will give you better topology to work on, but it'll keep the, the detail that you created in that area. So right now I'm just using the damn standard with like a like I would with a pen or pencil when I'm drawing, just scribbling very quickly some key detailed areas with the damn standard. And then, uh, you know, making sure that it all sort of flows nicely. I'm, I'm not being precious at all when I'm sculpting, especially at this stage. Um, I don't think I'm ever really precious with the model because uh, if you become too particular with it, and uh, especially if you're working for a studio and your director or art director or lead comes up to you and, and you've spent hours and hours on this piece, and then they turn around and say, we're changing it or we're going a different route. Then all of a sudden, all that hard work you've done is just thrown out the window. So I like to, to not keep too precious with my work, even my own personal work. I'm not too fussed about, uh, you know, having exact poor detail or wrinkle detail on my creature or characters. I like to just show people how it could look and uh, if you want you can always take it further obviously you can retopo re it to a better standard or and uh, go really in on the detail but for me it's not about it's about being creative and also trying to inspire others to be creative and i don't think sitting there for six hours trying to sculpt the perfect pore or perfect wrinkle is the way to do it if you want to inspire people to get into zbrush then you, you know you you have to show them what you can do and have fun, really. It's all about having fun at the end of the day. Because if you're not having fun with your sculpt, you're pretty much going to put it to one side and not look at it again. So for me, it's all about fast, fun sculpting. And uh, we're coming up to the end of the block out stage. I'm just adding extra 
model pieces onto the shoulder blades and then dynamishing them together and then just sculpting some detail on them. And then we'll move into, we'll be moving into the detailing stage. And that's just as quick as the, as the block out stage. And uh, I try again, try to just, just get as much down on the model as possible uh, for detailing. And we can always change it or make it look better inside of Photoshop later when we're, you know, compositing it in the final piece. So once the block out stage is done and I'm happy with how the model looks, that it looks pretty much 80% there, uh, I will re it. I usually do this off camera because it's quite a boring task and quite a long task to do, uh, but I'll re it, project all the detail onto the new model and then go in and start adding detail. So the first thing I would do normally is to get some alphas because I'm gonna try to rush it, try to, try to get a concept out as fast as possible and again try to have fun with it uh, you could spend hours detailing and that's good if you're doing a very unique perfect sculpt but for me it's all about having fun and, and sculpting very quickly and getting my ideas down so i usually tend to just go in and plaster my model with alphas that i found online or i've created myself brushes and um and after that, once I've got a base layer of of uh, detail down, I'll go in with the damn standard like I am now, and I'll go in and I'll add detail and also use the standard brush and the clay buildup as well. Uh, but yeah, just going around the whole model using alpha maps and basic brushes to add those details in. And then once once all that's done, it's onto the, the texturing inside of ZBrush, uh, which I'll do. It's a small poly painting and texturing, uh, but I'll show you that a little later on. Right now, I'm just really trying to define some rocky texture using the damn standard, as well as the alphas, uh, using putting some cracks in there, some really deep cracks with the damn standard, uh, using the move brush still as well to get that. Even though it's at this stage, you can still use it to to move some of that geometry into place a little bit better um, so it fits better. So I'm going to leave you until we come back and I'll show you how I do the poly painting and uh, that shouldn't take too long so yeah I'll check back at me check, check back with me at the poly painting stage. So once I have done all the detail work and all the sculpt work, it's onto the poly painting. And for this one, I always use skin shader as a base color, a base material. I don't add it or I don't fill the model with the base material. I just add the RGB and then I go and I fill in those areas of uh, color with a fill. So it's completely covered. And then after that, I'll just use a standard brush and I'll just hint at detail and hint at paint colors. Uh, it's kind of like, painting a miniature in real life you know you start with your base color then you work in some colors on top and then after that uh, you add in darker patches and darker recessed areas with something you know cracks and crevices and stuff like that using masking inside a zbrush so in poly painting 
Uh, if you go down to the masking on the right hand side in the subtool section, you can actually get this thing called masking and that will come up in a minute. Uh, you'll see how it works. Basically, you mask out an area, you influence that mask, you change it, and then you can paint just in those areas that are masked in or masked out. And uh, this can, can be very handy, especially if you're doing a lava creature or something like that with you want to get some of that highlights inside those crevices. It's really, really handy for that. Um, but yeah, after that, it's onto the posing of our character, which won't be taking too long because uh, it's very, very basic pose. It's just tilting the head slightly. And then after that, it's onto the rendering stage, which I have plenty of videos online, uh, tutorials, uh, but I'll give you just a basic rundown of how I do that. So right now we're just posing the character, but uh, in the next stage, we'll be rendering it using ZBrush. And uh, that just basically, you know, trying to get a good image, trying to get a good camera angle, trying to get a good lighting setup, shadows, ambient occlusion. And then I've got a bunch of materials I use to composite the character inside of Photoshop later on, which you'll see me rendering out as we talk right now. And you can see I'm testing out the lighting uh, first and then once I'm happy with it I'll render it out and after that it's onto the madcap materials which you can get online for free at my online stores or you can go to ZBrush's um, website and download them for free there as well I just bought I just have them in my space because it's easier and quicker just to download it from my place and uh, use it uh, alongside these tutorials or other tutorials I have online as well so you can see now, I'm just going through the matcap materials and I'm rendering out each one that I want. You don't have to use the ones I have, but these ones are the ones I normally use a lot of. And I'll just go through them and I'll make sure that I'm getting the right ones that I want. As well as the matcap materials, we'll also render out some lighting passes. So uh, I'll just use a Blin material, as you can see now, and then I'll pump that light up and then move the light around my model and render out a couple of key lights uh, for my composition and that's pretty much it so when we return I'll be inside of Photoshop and I'll just run you through quickly how I composited the image inside of Photoshop so yeah see you in Photoshop Hey guys, if you're interested in learning how to sculpt and composite characters, then visit my online stores for in-depth tutorials, models, brushes, and more. Just follow the links in the description box below. Also, if you enjoy this content, then please like, share, and subscribe for more videos in the future. Now, let's get back to the video. Okay, so finally we're inside of Photoshop, and uh, what I've done is I've brought in all those rendered materials or rendered images I got from ZBrush. And I'm going through each one and I'm just using different layer types to composite this image and uh, get a baseline first. So with the materials that I've rendered out, um, some things work, some things don't. I tend to try and use all of them. If I can't, then I'll just use some of them. There are key ones that I use a lot. And there's some of that I don't use at all sometimes. Uh, it all depends on the image you're trying to, 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 to convey to your art director or to your audience. So for this one, you can see I'm just going through each one, trying to keep the mental image of a rocky surface. So there's not a lot of specular. I try to keep it to a bare minimum, but as well as try to add it, or incorporate it in other areas to, because it's got like a, humanistic uh, female face you want to have some specular somewhere and uh, right there I have just used the ambient occlusion map to create the sort of lava um, map out of it uh, to get in those crevices and add some highlights to those sort of heat areas of my character and once I'm happy with how the model or how the composition is looking, I'll start adding a background like I have now. And uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on all of this because you can find plenty of tutorials online 
I even have paid tutorials you can find, which goes into very, very detailed explanations on how to do this technique. And uh, for right now, I'm just going in. Now that I have something to work with, I'm going in, I'm adding extra detail on top. So I'm adding more highlights in the eyes, detailing the eyes, making sure that they glow with a red hot intensity and uh, going with a brush and just adding some little details here and there. And then also add some darkness around the eyes. I know that's counterintuitive because they're glowing, but the outer edge is darker. It doesn't really matter because what I'm trying to portray is a more feminine look. So you can think of that as the eyeshadow of our character, just having a darker area there. And then I'm going, to, going around making sure I'm using all the other maps I didn't use earlier on. So you, always, you can always go back and you can use other maps if you uh, find that you're missing something. And then as I go through this, I start to incorporate the, the background onto the model. So I'm highlighting the outer area of the model to sort of blend in with the background a little bit. So this technique has taken me, whew, must be at least three to four years to try to get the, to this stage. Uh, a lot of people, when they do their ones, they they kind of rush it and they don't sort of take time to to to, to look at their composition. So uh, it comes out over contrast or the, the details are lost because they've used a technique that wasn't uh, what I created or I've used and uh, they, they just they, they you have to have an artistic v vision when it comes to this part uh, of the process and I think having that artistic vision you can you can make it look really cool uh, I'm not saying that Every, the people who don't have that artistic vision can't pick this up. It's very difficult to pick this type of rendering and compo compositing up. I, I, I'm not saying that, you know, it's going to be easy. It's definitely taken me a long time to figure this out as well. But uh, once you do get it down and you, you, you keep that in your head, you'll be able to make some amazing looking images uh, from ZBrush. So coming up to the end of the video now and it's just gonna a few more minutes uh, I just wanted to thank Yasan Stov for letting me use his concept in this piece and again you can find the links to his portfolios below and uh, if you want you can go on my online stores check them out as well I've got tons of stuff on there for beginners in particular to, to try out I even got models from previous sculpts that I've done online, which can be really handy if you wanted to just have a model to work with rather than having to build one yourself, especially if you're at the learning, very beginning stages of your uh, ZBrush learning career. I'd also like to thank everyone who has subscribed to my channel and my other social medias. Uh, without you, I wouldn't be doing these videos. Uh, you really helped me build this community up and build this channel up. So uh, if you can, please like, share and subscribe. I'm still trying to hit that 100,000 mark. And uh, yeah, it'd be really cool if I could. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next episode, episode five, where I'll be choosing another artist's work to try and create using my own techniques. And uh, we'll see what, what I come out with. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and um, until next time, take care.